Well, hello again, it's Bob and one KPR. And today we're going to look at some uh, shack accessories. Uh, these are uh, homebrew devices that we've put together uh, to aid our uh, SWL shortwave listening uh, activities as well as ham radio. Actually, this rack has been used to feed uh, the receive side of a, uh, a ham radio station uh, when uh, conditions are bad or you're chasing DX or some weak signal stuff. But primarily it's for monitoring uh, pretty much the full full spectrum of uh, the short wave and uh, some of the microwave bands. Uh, let's start here at the top of the rack. Well, actually at the top we've got a uh, as a sidebar, we've got a Watkins Johnson VHF UHF receiver. It's the 8615. It's a half rack unit, and uh, I went and mounted it in a full rack along with some control circuitry uh, so that we could select the antennas, uh, adjust RF gain, attenuate, and uh, the line line audio output into the uh, the Rack's audio system. If you can find an 8615 somewhere with the right filters in it, buy it. It's a great radio if you're interested in uh, receiving uh, above 30 uh, megahertz. Anyhow, first homebrew is the uh, probably the final version of any any uh, pre uh, pre selector that I'm going to build. It's a uh, very tight, high Q, uh, passive pre-selection unit. Passive being that it won't. There's there's no transistors or ICs to add noise to the front end. So, uh, and it's using very high Q components. So, uh, based on, for example, a broadcast band that uh, broadcast bands that run in uh, a 10 kilohertz channels. Uh, this has a very high Q for isolating a particular 10 kilohertz uh, portion of the spectrum. Right now, all the red lights indicate that it's in bypass mode. Uh, we could put it in, and as you select the band, of course, it tells you uh, where you're at. Uh, if you want broadband pre-selection, in other words, maybe there's uh, some local thing nearby that's uh, not so close, but still loud enough to be overloading uh, your receiver because it's sending so much signal down the antenna. Uh, the blue indicators show that now you've got kind of a lower Q, uh, less loss type uh, filter involved. We also have a spoiler in here. We can go from very high Q uh, to less Q. And all that does is really kind of round out the shoulders and the skirts of the bandpass filter so that uh, uh, you don't have quite the critical tuning. It's more broad in tuning. We also have uh, a system standby where you can shunt the antenna, and if you're going to be away for a while or something, this will remove any static electricity that's building up on the incoming line and so forth. Uh, a bypass switch that will uh, bypass the entire system. It connects the input to the output, and that's it. Sensitivity, we've got a uh, inline always uh, attenuator, so you can uh, knock the signal down as necessary. Uh, gain control, uh, the controls a mimic uh, uh, preamp. It's good for about 20 dB from... Uh, well, virtually DC to uh, a couple of gigahertz. Uh, and then uh, receiver select function. In this case, we only have four of them with their own output level control. So you can be monitoring with two radios at once and uh, and select, uh, balance the levels, of course, and, and uh, control it that way. Uh, What's nice about this is it would be great for mixing two radio signals, for instance, upper and lower sideband at the same time, uh, to get kind of a quasi-diversity uh, 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 reception system to eliminate QSB and, uh, and fading. 
All right, under that is uh, a multi-coupler. It's really a distribution system or an output splitter. Uh, same thing, we go into standby mode and bypass everything. We ha also have a preamp in this unit, attenuator and gain, and uh, eight different outputs for eight different radios, all with their own level controls. Uh, you can uh, terminate the input of a radio, feed it through the uh, isolation circuits that isolate each channel internally. Uh, that, by the way, is a, uh, a kind of a Darlington with a uh, emitter follower output at 50 ohms, so you get nice isolation. Or you can go direct right to the input, tie everything to the input, which is blue. Uh, that is only a bad thing to do when you have local oscillator feedback into the uh, front end of a radio. It'll get into the antenna circuit and into the other radio that's working, and that's uh, not a good idea sometimes. Modern radios have good RF isolation at the front end. They usually almost always have a RF gain circuit ahead of the oscillator. And therefore, they're isolated from the antenna port, and you're not going to get that. But uh, it's a feature. You can, you, if, you, if you think that the uh, internal circuits are attenuating some weak signal that you're chasing, you could always go directly to the antenna and check it out, see if that's true or not. Most cases, it won't be true. Or you just shut it off and, uh, and monitor the other uh, radios that, uh, or whatever activity you're doing at the time. Okay, so now we're down at the uh, lower part of the rack where the audio happens. Uh, this is a home-brewed uh, AM demodulator, which has several, uh, actually five different demodulating schemes in it. Uh, this is, uh, you can't quite see it in the uh, camera here, but uh, this is full sync detection, AM synchronous detection. Uh, we have a full wave detector that takes both sides of the uh, you know, double side band and combines them. We have a very linear detector that was designed by a friend of mine uh, that's very effective for, uh, for high quality uh, broadband, nice audio reception. Uh, we have a high dynamic range filter uh, or detector that uh, uh, will handle very high swings, local strong signals, uh, local uh, uh, stations, and uh, more importantly, when there's a lot of static or lightning crashes going on, uh, it, it tends to not overload and drive all the circuits nuts uh, because of its high head end. And uh, finally, we've got a, an envelope detector, which is a standard, very fast uh, uh, diode using uh, just one side of the uh, AM carrier. That too is very clean, very fast, and uh, of course high fidelity because it's uh, certainly faster than any of the signals that they happen to uh, be broadcasting. Um, we have an input impedance selector so that you don't load down the uh, IF strip of the radio, and an input control where you can select from one to four different radios. Uh, the IF frequency stage here you can switch in a, a preamp, an attenuator and a preamp gain control. Uh, we have selectivity filters to help make the whole experience pleasant uh, where we can go wide or narrow on the uh, audio filter. Uh, we can have it in circuit or bypass everything, and we can also peak or notch whatever portion of the audio spectrum uh, we want to go after. And of course, here's the uh, the actual depth of the notch. You can adjust that, and of course, the center frequency, anywhere from uh, way down in the in the bass region up into the treble region. Um, there's also a passband filter, which just chops things off. Um, the high cut at, uh, let's see, I don't even remember anymore, uh, 8K, 6K, and 4K, and the low at 100, 200, 
and 300 hertz. So you can get a nice voice only or very broadband uh, music uh, passband. Then finally on to the audio amp uh, drive level and uh, amplifier output level. level That could be switched in or out as required. And again, output impedance and uh, output selector to which of the four uh, audio amps are you going to send this to? It could be sent on the telephone line, your power amp in, in the uh, studio for playing through the monitor speakers, uh, headphones, whatever you want to do. Uh, so that's that thing. And then finally, uh, the audio, the heart of the audio system here is uh, uh, a mixer, preamp, and power amp combination where we, we could monitor line audio and the power amp, actual power out in watts. Uh, the tone, the EQing thing is uh, kind of unique. We can go from a flat response to a tone control response with bass and treble. We can go to uh, contouring. This control contours to what's known as a happy face response or a humped response, depending on whether you want voice or music. And finally, a tilt control, which is reciprocal tone control uh, equalization, where you have uh, reciprocal bass and treble swings. That's kind of handy uh, for a uh, quick just-by-ear type uh, response. Uh, below that, uh, the four inputs from four different radios. Those are all either hard selected, one, two, three, four, or all, or none. Uh, two D mod inputs, so we could take the uh, demodulator output from here, feed it in here, and control the audio. There's also a second one for the Watkins Johnson that's up above it. Uh, audio outputs that you can feed uh, uh, broadcast boards or uh, whatever place your uh, telephone lines, whatever place your uh, your audio signal has to go, and that could be either for uh, tape or from the mix bus or from the uh, post-mixing, so it's pre-mix, post-mix, and mix bus, and then three different speaker outputs so that you can have a wide range or a voice only or whatever speaker selection you may want, preamp gain, power amp gain, power, headphone level. And that's about it. Uh, we can scoot down just a little, and we'll look, take a look at the uh, line level audio. This is a filter uh, system for the incoming AC supply, where we can uh, we we have uh, pi and uh, T type filters on the actual 120 volt input. We could monitor the hot, the neutral, and the ground lines. We could switch in or out uh, MOV filters, uh, trans orbs, uh, hash filters, <coughs> and uh, a long-term uh, uh, pulse-type uh, filtering, which is done here and here. Uh, there's six different modes of noise. It can come down the power line, and this should handle them. Below that is a modified uh, uh, AC strip that uh, we've also added a little bit of filtering to, but also a master switch, so we could just shut the entire rack down. And as you can see here, we could just uh, shut off any or turn on any piece of equipment. All right, we've gone long here, so that's about it for uh, rack accessories for the shack, listening, SWLing, or ham radio. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope we can have more soon. This is Bob in one KPR, and thank you for watching.